We're ready. I now call to order the Thursday, June 8th, 2017, regular meeting of the Ann Arbor Historic District Commission. Jill, would you please call roll? Yes, if I had a roll sheet, I would do that. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Beeson, Commissioner Bushkull. Here. Commissioner Cope. Here. Commissioner Hall. Commissioner Ramsburg. Commissioner Rockland. Here. Commissioner White. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, just one reminder, everybody. There's a, there are only four voting members here tonight, so if there is a 2-2 tie, the application does not pass. Okay? <laughs> Shouts of disgust from the gallery. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll take a moment to explain the order of tonight's evening. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Ann Arbor Historic District Commission. Each case tonight will be called and we'll first hear the staff presentation and recommendations. Following this, the commissioners who served on the review committee will present their observations and recommendations. At this point, the applicant will have an opportunity to step forward and provide any comment or additional information about the application. Once the applicant has finished, members of the public who wish to speak on the current case may do so, while please noting the time limit of three minutes per person. Everyone who steps forward will need to state their name aloud for the record and sign in at the sheet located at the podium and limit their comments to the application at hand. Following any public comment, the applicant may be called back to the podium to rebut any public comments and answer questions the commission may have. Once all the questions have been answered, the hearing will be closed and the commission will deliberate the application, make a motion, have a discussion, and then vote. If any members of the public would like to speak to general preservation topics and not to any specific application, opportunity is provided during the public commentary following approval of the agenda. Everyone who'd like to address the commission may do so. Well, again, please stating their name aloud for the record and signing in at the front podium. Thank you for coming tonight. Your comments are valuable to the commission. In our agenda, our first item we have is approval of our agenda. Do we have any additions or revisions? Seeing none, we'll approve the agenda as presented. Next up, we have D, audience participation. If we have anyone who'd like to bring up a topic not on tonight's agenda, now is the time you may do so. Seeing none, we'll close audience participation. E, unfinished business, we have none. So we'll move on to our hearings. Our first hearing is F1, 717 West Huron Street, an enclosed porch. Jill, if you'd please give the staff report. This stately tutor first appears in the 1906 Polk City Directory as the home of Titus and Ida Hutzel. Titus was the co-owner of Hutzel and Company Plumbing and Heating and superintendent of the Ann Arbor Water Company. Titus lived in the home until 1943 or 44. It features a stone foundation, front bay window, wood siding and trim, and decorative stucco in the gables and around some of the windows. It is in the Old West Side Historic District. In 2013, an application to install fiberglass sliders in the same porch openings that we'll be talking about uh, was denied by the commission. Properties on the south side of West Huron Street, west of 3rd Street, and east of 7th Street. And the applicant is seeking HTC approval to enclose an existing side porch on the east side of the house. Here you're seeing the north and west side of the house. It's quite gorgeous. And um, current owner has taken excellent care of it. And the landscaping is, is certainly wonderful and lovely and beneficial for um, people living on Huron to give them some privacy. You can see here where the trees are. And this is the porch that we're talking about. Um, I think only one of you, maybe two, were here for the previous application, but that doesn't matter because this is a new one. Uh, you can see here a couple more shots of the porch. It has a stone foundation. The stone foundation is uh, much earlier than the rest of the open porch. There used to be a, an enclosed room here. Um, at some point, the room was taken off after 1945, and this porch was installed in its place, this open porch. Uh, inside the porch, there's a bay window, um, and there's a door leading into the interior of the house. This is a shot from the sidewalk where the driveway intersects with West Huron. And here's a view from behind the house looking toward Huron. It's pretty straightforward, five-sided porch. Um, nice skirting, nicely maintained. Has new, um, new guardrails and uh, new porch on the street-facing side that I might have a picture of in a minute. So here's the existing floor plan. This darker wall is the house 
exterior wall. And this is the existing porch. Here's the newer deck that I mentioned and uh, stairs going down to the front yard. These are stairs going down to the driveway. The proposal is to enclose the porch by putting in a, a, a regular wall clad in um, lap siding with some transom windows on the south side and then to use um, fixed or here slider and here slider windows that are fiberglass clad wood and uh, to install a door here on the, the side stairs going down. It will in effect make it um, a habitable space and it'll still be accessed through the, the, the current door opening that goes into the house. And there's one, um, one four by four post right here right now that would be eliminated in this plan and they'll put in some sort of a header beam up above it, uh, below these transoms um, in order to open up this wall completely. But the footprint uh, stays the same, the roof stays the same um, the, the stairs stay the same and the foundation, it's just the stuff between the roof and the foundation that's, that's proposed to be replaced. Another set of sliders over here. And here you can see, oh, that back corner is, um, uh, is sided and here's the rear. This one is sided also, but it does have nice uh, windows across the top. So as you can see, this has a pretty traditional appearance, a large amount of transparency on the front, um, which is certainly in keeping with the feel of the existing open porch, as you see it from the street. The porch posts themselves would may or may not be reused, but that's, um, I don't think it's important, uh, as long as the supports are in the same location as they're proposed. The siding on the back is proposed to be wood, which is appropriate since the rest of the house is clad in wood. And this is certainly going to read as a modern addition. I don't think anyone's gonna be tricked into thinking that this is old just because it has some wood siding on it. Um, the door on the east side is shown as uh, vertical wood panels uh, with a small square window, um, which I think is totally appropriate. If this design were to change, I would just work with the applicant because that's uh, something that can be staff approved since it's not an original door. And all the stairs and guardrails are existing. So let me read you some standards. Uh, from the Secretary of the Interior, the standards that best apply are numbers two, nine, and 10. Two says that the historic character of a property will be retained and preserved. The removal of distinctive materials or alteration of features, spaces, and spatial relationships that characterize a property will be avoided. Number nine says new additions, exterior alterations, or related new construction shall not destroy historic materials that characterize the property. The new work shall be differentiated from the old and shall be compatible with the massing size, scale, and architectural features to protect the historic integrity of the property and its environment. And 10 says that new additions and adjacent or related new construction will be undertaken in such a manner that if removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the historic property will be unimpaired. From the guidelines for additions, recommended as constructing a new addition so that there's the least possible loss of historic materials so that character defining features are not obscured, damaged, or destroyed. Also recommended is locating the attached exterior addition at the rear or on an inconspicuous side of the historic building and limiting its size and scale in relationship to the historic building and designing new additions in a manner that makes clear what is historic and what is new. This uh, application proposes no changes to the building's footprint, massing, or character-defining foundation, resulting in a space that's, that's usable um, year-round. The appearance of the open porch will be altered, but staff feels that the work is acceptable since the porch is not an original feature of the house anyway. The new work is distinguished by modern materials. Staff feels that those materials and the overall design are compatible with the historic house and neighborhood and meet the Secretary of the Interior Standards and the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines. Thank you. Thank you. And who are commissioners on the review committee? Um, myself and Bob. Mm -hmm. Max and Bob. Yes. If you guys would please give the review committee report. Um, I think uh, Ms. Thatcher has uh, pretty well summed it up on this one. Um, there's not going to be a, a loss of any historic material on the property. Um, the 
design uh, element with the full glass in the front and sides, I think, keeps the integrity and, and being able to see uh, through there and into the original parts of the house with the bay window and everything are all going to be intact still. Um, so I, I agree with Jill and her assessment on this one. I agree with Jill and uh, Max with this project. I support the project. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Do we have the applicant present? If you'd step forward, please. If you have anything you'd like to add to the review committee report or the staff report, you may do so. And can you state your name, please? Terry Mara. Okay. Do we have questions for the applicant? I had a question. Yeah. I, um, by the way, the house is, I think it's been said, but it's, it's beautiful. Uh, Thank you. Really such a, you know, from the street especially, just has that, just, it's, it's, uh, it's gorgeous. Um, and I just, my question is about the south side of the porch, because when I was by on Huron, um, I didn't go onto the property, but just from the sidewalk, you can see into the porch, obviously, and then you can see through the porch into what I'm assuming is the backyard, and is it, what's the view south that you're, it seems like you're blocking what could be the best view by installing the high windows on that It's side. a parking lot with 15 a, cars. Oh, okay. It's, there's nothing attractive about it. Right. The reason I want to put the transoms in is because I want to have that southern heat exposure sure. to help with keeping it warm. But <clears throat> personally, there is no view that is attractive back right, there. Right, so you're automobiles. in fact, blo are you blocking the view then by having the wall there or you're just not, interested in having a view or what? Uh, I want to have at least one wall enclosed that'll allow me to maybe put a TV against yep. that wall okay. or to give more insulation because uh -huh. to have it all glass then means my bill may go up with electricity or heat to keep it warm. Yeah. And for the record, it was the Hutzel Heating and Plumbing Family Home and <laughs> no, though I approached right. them to see if they would give me a deal on a new heater, <laughs> um, they said they don't own the building anymore so, and they don't, have, they don't need to advertise. Okay. But visually, there's really nothing aesthetic behind there got it so to have one wall to, to anchor mm -hmm. art or a tv or insulation is kind of the choice that the architect and myself came up with okay one other question for you and it's just a curiosity the inclusion of the pictures of flowers in the back of the packet mm -hmm. is that to brighten our day what's the question <laughs> what kind of flowers are they or <clears throat> oh those? it just it just so happened to be part of a package I had used for presenting art to a client. And so I just, it's okay. for your enjoyment. So. There we go. Well, thank you. God, Jill wouldn't art. let me bring cookies to give to you, so I brought you pretty pictures. <laughs> thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? I had one other question, yeah. Uh, the, um, the beam that's going to go across this, has that been sized yet? No. Okay. I mean, it will be the size, it has to be a size that will hold the roof. Right. So it will be a substantial beam. Yeah. Um, just my carpenter knows his stuff, so he obviously will put something very substantial there. Okay. That elevation might have to be modified. Oh, is the beam going below the transom windows then or yes. above? Be between, between the right? transom yeah, okay. and the sliding door. So then if that beam comes back and it's like, twice as big as they're estimating here, will that have to be resubmitted or? Only if you express a concern, uh, okay. a concern now. I'm not okay. expressing Otherwise a concern as long not. as it's okay yeah. that she won't have to resubmit yeah. Yeah. to, okay. Yeah. Typically that would be fine. All right. yeah. The transoms might, may or may not yeah. be the right size at this right. point, I would well, say. Well, I would like yeah. to use, just for financial purposes, standard sliding windows rather than mm -hmm. have right. them yeah. each done individually. So we're going to work around, but based on that beam that will hold up the ceiling, yeah. okay. we'll work backwards. Yeah. I think if based on an inch or two to hit the right window size, it exactly. won't change the configuration. Oh, okay. If it went beyond that and you had to do something different, probably coming back for a staff approval. If it's not changing too much, it would be appropriate. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. And also, if you make sure if you didn't, to sign in. Thank you. Do we have any members of the public who would like to speak on this application? All right. Seeing none, we'll close our public portion. Do we have a commissioner who would like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. 
I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 717 West Huron Street, a contributing property in the Old West Side Historic District to enclose the east side porch using clad windows and siding proposed. The work is compatible in the exterior design, arrangement, materials, and relationship to the house and the surrounding area and meets the City of Ann Arbor Historic District got design guidelines and the Secretary <coughs> of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation and Guidelines for Rehabilitating Historic Buildings, in particular Standards 2, 9, and 10, and the guidelines for new additions and, and district or neighborhood setting. Support. Seconded by Commissioner White. Discussion on the motion. I think I had one more question, actually, and I don't know if it, this is for the applicant or not. I, just one sec. The, um, I, let's go to the east side, I think. That mm -hmm. slider there, um, is there a guard required mm. for that slider? And, okay, so it was a question for you. Yeah. <laughs> And that was one thing that I should have added that, Jill, we did talk about. Those are permanent sliders. They're the same sliders to match the front aesthetically. Oh. They're called, I guess, permanent doors. Yep. Huh. So, so they're fixed. They don't but slide. But they're fixed, and they mm -hmm. won't slide. Yeah. Okay. They won't have screens. Oh, I but get But they'll it. be okay. the same the front, to match. The, yes. for the north, they match the north side, but exactly. they don't move. Okay. Interesting. I think that was probably in the packet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we won't end up with a big piece of wood across there. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that looking at a new smart. subdivision. Okay. Yeah, I'll add that I agree with the comments so far from our review committee and that I believe this project meets our guidelines. Any other discussion? All right, seeing none, we'll move to vote. All those in favor, please say yes. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion carries. Your application is approved. You'll receive written notice from staff. Please remember to pull any required building permits. You're welcome. Thank Thanks, you. Sir. Thank you. Our next item is F2, 611 East William Street, a barrier-free ramp. Jill, if you'd give the staff report, please. Uh, 611 East William is the Delta Kappa Epsilon, or Deke Shant. It was built in 1878 and was designed by William LeBaron Jenny, a famous Chicago architect who's the inventor of the modern skyscraper. He was on the faculty of the University of Michigan for three years. And uh, Jenny described this building as a copy of a 13th century French church. The interior was described as chapel-like with beautiful collar beams. This is the only Jenny building that, is, um, that remains um, in Michigan. The Deeks used the Chant for regular meetings until the chapter was deactivated in the 1960s. Um, in 1971, <coughs> chapter members raised funds and renovated the structure um, to use as a, a clubhouse for the Deeks. And um, for the last several years, uh, it has not been used at all by Delta Kappa Epsilon, and um, the, the, the owners have been looking for a new purpose for this building. And tied to a new purpose is the requirement that buildings have barrier-free access. So if this application is seeking HDC approval to install a barrier-free lift on the west side of the front door, to temporarily remove a portion of the courtyard wall to allow, allow construction access, and to temporarily make up two openings in the foundation of the front facade. So here's the front of the building. Um, you're probably at least aware of it. It has this, this pretty substantial wall um, going down the alley and around the front with a big gate, iron gate. The wall uh, is pre-1945, though it's not original to the building. And, if you look at the um, applicant's photo, uh, it's in your the, the, the packet supplements that were on your seat. There's a there's a very early photo, probably from the 1880s, that shows it with nothing around it, no other buildings except houses, no um, no big wall. But regardless, the wall is a contributing part of the site since um, we're not attempting to restore it back to some earlier time period when there was no wall. On the left, we have the front, just some of the detail, this very cool Gothic arch above the door. Um, the stained glass windows are lovely, and work was done on them within the last five years um, to, um, I don't know if they were fully restored, but they were at least stabilized. And uh, this is the side uh, facing the alley, which would be east. 
facing. No. North. East. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Lots of ivy on the, on the, on the walls. Um, the part of the building that's in the roughest shape right now is probably these chimneys, at least from what you can see on the outside. Um, those chimneys definitely need some attention. You can see daylight here um, through some of the, the, the edge, the metal edge up there. The reason that a lift is proposed near the front door, which would normally not be uh, an appropriate place to put one, is that the other entrances to the building all spill out directly onto somebody else's property, more or less. Here's the front door. This is a fire escape that's going down from the second floor. This is a close-up shot of that. There's no way to put a lift around this corner because it doesn't lead to anywhere. There's a CMU wall in the back here uh, to help keep the courtyard closed off and keep vandals out. The, the position of the lift is right here to the left of the door, um, not touching the wall at all. And there are uh, stone steps that are proposed to be reused. They would be pulled back and a little bit farther um, on the walkway toward the William Street. And then a new um, platform, a uh, new landing, uh, larger landing would be installed here that the lift would dump out onto. I'll show you more of that in a minute. Here's the interior of the courtyard wall. This is the parts left and right that face William Street. The walls in pretty rough shape, um, especially this side in the alley. You can see all of this is new orange brick. It doesn't match the older red brick. And uh, you can also see that there's this large metal guard rail that um, uh, you've got a better picture in your packet. The, the, the metal supports just punch right through this wall into the interior courtyard and there are being mm -hmm. beams sunk, sunk down into the road to, um, into the courtyard ground to um, keep somebody from totally taking out this wall with a truck. And this is the back door. This spills out onto the alley. Um, so William Street is to the left here. And uh, right about here, there's a, there's a, there's a new square of, of concrete here. And the corner of it is the property line. So there's only a couple of feet, maybe, uh, beyond this step uh, that's, that's on this property. And the same thing on the back. These, these wheeled carts are on the property. The dumpsters are off. So even if we were to you know, propose a new door or something on the back, there's just no place to put a barrier-free lift and access. And it's probably more appropriate to give people access through the front door anyway. So the proposal is to take out this section of the wall between the, the two pilasters. This is a little bit off. Um, save the bricks, reinstall them afterwards. Um, save the gate, reinstall it. And perhaps make two openings. Um, this limestone sill here would come off um, they need to take it off and clean it up and reinstall it anyway. Um, but they would take that off and keep it, number the stones that make up the foundation, um, make a couple holes in here in order to get access to the basement, which is a cellar right now that they want to dig deeper in order to put a couple of restrooms down there. Uh, there will also be behind this wall a new all interior elevator to go up to the second floor and down to the basement. Um, right now, uh, I don't know if any of you have ever been in the building, but the upstairs is a big, lovely, open room. You go up the stairs, and it's just open, and it's got the stained glass windows and everything, and actually feels very church-like, which is the, the proposed use is. The main floor has a kind of interesting little lobby, but um, uh, behind that is just white walls with no windows, and last time I was in there, it was a lot of cubicles for people using it as office space. So, uh, and Jeff Perkins is the contractor, and he wasn't even sure that he was going to need to open up these basement walls, but he wanted to be sure that he got approval in case he had to. So here's a drawing of what the lift would look like. Uh, these are the stairs that are here right now. They would be pulled farther out. Two little new stone wing walls would be constructed on either side of the stairs, and it would be an L shape on this side and run along in front of the lift. Um, you're never going to be able to totally hide it, and that at least you know covers up the, the 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 bottom portion of it, makes it feel a little more enclosed there. Here's the current courtyard. 
the big stairs are back here on the side. Here you can see how close the lot line is, uh, and here. And um, here's the proposal. I'm going to, in a second, switch to a, a version that Gary Cooper colored in for us. But here's the front gate. This would be a new concrete path that's, um, that's, that's uh, accessible um, and smooth. You would turn the corner here and go into the lift. The lift would bring you up, and you would exit the lift onto this new entry landing and, and uh, go into the building, or uh, you could use the stairs in the front. And these are the two little wing walls on either side, and this is a little wing wall here. Purple is walls. Pink is lift, green is pathways, blue is the new landing. So really, um, in terms of historic materials, nothing's being touched with the exception of the stairs being pulled out to allow that landing there. All of this is reversible. Um, if someday a new style of lift um, becomes more popular, it would be very easy to just pull that out. It's, I just <coughs> view it as sort of a big piece of mechanical equipment. These walls are certainly removable. There are all, or there were all kinds of little um, benches of stacked up blocks and pavers and things all around the courtyard that are no longer there. They were not original or anything, but um, very easily reversed. So here is the wing wall that's shaped like an L, and these are the newly relocated stairs going up. This is the new landing, and if you were using the lift, you would come around the side here go in, it would lift you up, and it would spit you out at door level. There's more information in the packet on the lifts and things. Um, I didn't include them all in here. This is to show how high the lift is going to go up. These, these are the, the steps that go up. Here's the lift, and this is the um, elevation of the, the, the new landing. This is a, not the exact um, lift that would go in, but this is a similar model. You can see that it has to have these glass walls that enclose it on the side. You go in down here, you push a button, it rises you up, and you go on your way on the other side. And then there are some specs. This, is, this one is shown, I think, without the full glass enclosure, but you get the idea. There's this little tower thing in the back, and this is the box that you um, wheel or walk into go in one way and out the other. So, Secretary of the Interior standards that best apply are numbers 1, 9, and 10. 1 says that a property will be used as it was historically or be given a new use that requires minimal change to its distinctive materials, features, spaces, and spatial relationships. And I already read 9 and 10 to you. From the Secretary of the Interior guidelines for health and safety, Recommended is identifying the historic building's character-defining spaces, features, and finishes so that code required work will not result in their damage or loss. Complying with health and safety codes in such a manner that character-defining spaces, features, and finishes are preserved. Not recommended is making changes to historic buildings without first exploring equivalent health and safety systems, methods, or devices that may be less damaging to historic spaces, features, and finishes. And from the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines, it's appropriate when required to install barrier-free ramps, stairways, and elevators that do not alter character-defining features of the building, keeping historic building materials intact, and that if removed in the future, keep the historic building intact. That there, uh, the original um, proposal was going to be for a ramp going up where you go in the gate, you take a left, you take a right, you take a right, and the run is not long enough to make up the distance. Uh, which is unfortunate, which is why um, the applicants had to move on to the lift idea. Um, obviously, not perfect to have a big piece of mechanical equipment in your front courtyard, but given that access to the building is imperative and it does not touch or destroy any historic materials, I think that this is a fine compromise. And uh, I believe that that concludes staff's report. So staff believes that um, <coughs> does meet the Secretary of Interior standards number 1, 9, and 10. And also that uh, the removal and reinstallation of portions of the courtyard wall and building foundation um, is being proposed in a manner that's sensitive to the historic construction and materials of the building. Thank you. Thank you. We had Commissioners Cope and White on the review committee. If you guys would give the review committee report, please. 
Uh, <clears throat> uh, coming into this one, we were, I was a little, I, I think, apprehensive to, to what they were doing because it seemed um, very similar, um, raising the height of those small walls and not being able to see, you know, the original foundation and the, uh, the orig original limestone um, frontage at the, the bottom skirt of the building. Um, we did not have these plans with us at the, the walkthrough. So seeing the spatial recognition of where, how far out from the building it's going to be, um, I think I have a better idea of it. Um, and, and not being, I thought it was going to be a lot closer to the building and kind of blocking the building a lot more. <clears throat> they, um, s some of the concerns that I, I did have on site, um, I know that removing the wall and to gain access there for construction materials and rebuilding it with those same materials is going to be very difficult. Um, and the same with cutting holes into the, to the building and resetting the, the foundation stones. Um, a good contractor is going to be able to do it, but it does put the historic materials at risk, I believe, um, with this project even though that is something completely separate from their bar barrier free. Yeah. Um, but other than, other than that, I, I really, I, I thought it was important that they were reusing the staircase because um, that's definitely the original stone stairs to the building. I like the idea that they're, they're reusing that material and keeping it on site. Um, and with those walls in front, I, I don't believe that, you know, we're, in, we're the wall in front is already impeding the vision of the building itself anyway. So uh, that's kind of what I, what I found in my, was my conclusion on that, on the project. I agree with um, Jill and Max, but I, I support the project. I think it's going to be, uh, Difficult because they're planning on numbering the bricks and where the bricks uh, and put them back where they got them. Yep. And the uh, I guess the other thing I would add in, in agreeing with um, um, Jill is there's just no other options on this building. Uh, we've seen other barrier-free um, applications here uh, where there were other options and and really this. This building has no other option, <laughs> and accessibility is, you know, mm -hmm. is something that's very important for any any business, church, or anything that's required. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yep. Do we have the applicant present? If you'd please step forward, sign in, and state your name aloud for the record. Bart Bryant from Redeemer Ann Arbor. I'd like to say that it's a great privilege to own this historic building. Uh, we intend to make modifications to the interior to make it safe and usable for our purposes. It's especially necessary because it's so small, every inch counts. But we regard our ownership as a stewardship of a bit of the history of Ann Arbor, and uh, we want to preserve that for the future and share it with our community. We're hardly experts at this, uh, but we're working with experts. So. Uh, but our intent is to make repairs with original materials as best we can to do our part to preserve the heritage at 611 and a half East William. Thank you. And do we have questions for the applicant? Sure. If you'd state your name, please. Uh, Gary Cooper, I'm the architect. Uh, Cooper Design, working with uh, the client. I just wanted to mention a couple of things is that I've been doing a sort of preservation for a, a long time and I, I, I've been on this board and uh, um, everybody loves this building and every architect wants to own it for their office or, or work on it. Um, and you know, we tried everything to avoid this, uh, this lift and uh, there's just no way around it. Um, we have no site. We have to have 32 lineal feet of run to meet barrier freeze, 8% or uh, 1 in 12 requirement. 
and we can get about 29 feet, four inches. We, there's no way we can squeeze another, another two and a half feet out of it. We have to have a five foot square turning radius at every corner every time we turn the ramp. So we do it twice, we have to turn twice. So we use 10 feet of our, our length up just to, to turn the corners. Um, we had it all designed for a ramp and, and we just could not make, make the length work. Um, the lift was really our only alternative. We couldn't go to a second entrance. We only have one other entrance on the building. And as has been mentioned by Jill, we've got no site room at all. I mean, the property line is less than a foot outside the chimneys in some places. Uh, we can't exit in the alley. We don't, you know, it's a public right of way. We can't exit to the rear because it's also, um, uh, I think, a DTE easement and a public right of way. Um, it's interesting that this building, um, when we talked to the building department, um, they agreed that it was not a change in use. And so there was some hope that we would not have to make changes, to, major changes to the building. Um, but the building in, uh, official ruled that it was a change in occupancy, that because it's uh, proposed to be a church, that it would have a different occupancy than it would have had as, as a fraternity meeting house. And therefore, it had to meet very free design requirements and um, and we do have to rebuild the stair inside um, to meet present day requirements because it's a, a set of winders, it's two sets of winders that, that go up to the second floor. And that's the main mean, means of egress. Um, so uh, I also wanted to mention that I don't think the contractor's intent is necessarily to make openings in both sides of the basement. And I, I think the first goal is gonna to be to try to take it all out the front door. And if that doesn't work, I think that the hope is that they can open up the basement in one, on one side or the other. Um, I think that he applied for both sides in that he doesn't know what side is potentially gonna uh, work the best for, for that situation. So if there's any more questions, I'd be glad to answer them. One question out of curiosity, how much deeper will the basement need to go? Um, we included some plans in the drawings. Uh, there, there is a basement in the front, I'd say the front quarter of the building that was, pro I don't know if it was original or not, but it was, it's, it was a very early basement. And the ceiling height is about, I'd say six foot 10, something like that. I think we're gonna go about another foot deeper if we can. The back of the building is a crawl space and it's only about three feet deep. And so we're really looking at building a new structural wall inside the foundation, the existing foundation wall to extend it. And uh, we'll go about another 12 inches deep, I believe. And I'm guessing with that much concrete, that may necessitate the opening to get it down there. Right, but we've also talked about taking the floor out um, mm -hmm. because the floor currently bears on a center retaining wall, which we're gonna end up taking out as well. So uh, we may be able to just come right in the front door and right down the basement. Mm -hmm. Can you explain the, um, I guess, two things about the front wall, please? Sure. The, um, so why do you need to take out the front wall and how did you select what's shown as the location for taking the front wall? I'm not, totally sure about the front. Well, the front wall, I think, is to be able to get um, a jump truck or uh, trucks or vehicles up, up closer to the building. You know, we are in a particular situation where this is a loading zone. The city will not grant us any use of the loading zone right in front of the trash can. Mm -hmm. They won't allow us to use the alley at all because the alley is all double parked all the way back as it is. And so we can't park any vehicles even short term in that location. So as all this dirt comes out, we want to try to get a vehicle, at least hand vehicles or small <coughs> hand trucks or a pickup or something to be able to move, uh, move the material out of the, out of the yard. And that's basically why we've, we've asked to open it up. Actually, similar to Dave's comment, though, I was wondering when I walked by and looked at this, if you wouldn't be able to take the right, 
half of the wall out where there's already some damaged brick or looks like some work that may need to happen versus the left that looks like it's pretty well intact. I was wondering that as well. The, we, the, we would be willing to do that. I yeah, think. shifting I, it around. Yeah. The, the left side of the wall as we're looking at it is all what I can tell is the original brick. Mm -hmm. And then on the right jam to the alley, it starts out as original. And then the alley brick clearly is has some really thick joints. It's, mm -hmm. it's something else. And then there's some third type of brick that's in between, like at the corner, it sort of climbs up. Mm -hmm. And that first pier has some of it as well, that like mini pier. Yeah, it's um, really. It would be nice if you could shift it all you know, from the jam to the corner gate yeah. over. I think to we the would corner. be willing to commit to that. I don't see why. I think it may end up improving that half of it. Yeah. But there's some beams so that you have. There's some beams on that uh, on right the side. Yeah. There is, but it don't. They only so, come in about this far behind the wall. So okay. I think that if we we're allowed to take the right half, I think we could still get an, an opening okay. in there. The wall. Is, not, is also unusual because nothing is symmetrical. I mean, the piers aren't in the center of the wall. Mm. I think there was a pier on the corner of the alley, but mm. it's, I think it's been mm -hmm. hit so many right. times that it's, mm. they've not rebuilt it, so. Um, I have one more additional just question for, for the construction guys. Uh, the interior holes that you're, they're proposing to go through the foundation to get the soil out of the building. Um, is there, where, is there a way to do that without removing the limestone? Maybe digging a, a deeper entrance? Because um, once you take that limestone down, you're going to have more brick problems above it and construction material coming in and out of there, I think really could uh, you know, pose an issue construction-wise, being as can, old as it is, too. <laughs> I think we can look at it. it um, that stone is, the limestone is, um, it's not really embedded in it's the- It's not? It's not, it's just okay. you know, mm -hmm. very lightly laid on there. It's, it's my impression that it'll come off and go right back on. Okay. But it's almost like tiles. Okay, I didn't so know it if it doesn't was extend embedded under in. I didn't get multiple a good look courses at it. Of no, it doesn't. It, okay. it, yeah. And it's pretty unusual, and around the side, they change from limestone to just um, field stone that they have split into a really shallow pieces. So there's really irregular, odd shaped pieces on the side. That helps me a lot. Thank okay. you. I have another question for you. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the location of the lift, um, is it possible to move the lift um, further west and maybe even along the west wall, I'm not sure about, I'm not sure if you're trying to, it looks like you're maintaining some sort of egress down those stairs on, this, on the west side, but I'm just curious, you know, right now the lift is gonna be 42 inches above the stoop. It will be blocking, you know, I agree that there's the wall that you can't see most of it, but you walk by the gate, you naturally peek in there and if it's possible to move the lift along the existing, there's a, that um, that existing left. building, you know, to the to the west there. Can you move it there. along that path so that? Um, we looked at that. Yeah, like show where you're showing there. Yeah, what what's preventing you from putting the lift along that the west path there? We could do it. For instance, the five foot square there before you enter the lift. Yeah we could put it um, south of that. But then all the area from the lift all the way around the corner to the front door would then have would be to higher. go up that right. mm -hmm. 2.6 feet. Yeah. So we would have a, a long L-shaped yeah. platform and we'd have to have Guardrails. railings on It'd it. Be more substantial. And I think it would be more substantial to do that. Right, because, well, that would be a path. It, I think that. For this egress also. Would you need guardrail? We don't need a guardrail, but we need handrails uh, because we're under 30 inches. Right. Uh, but if, you wouldn't need a handrails either if it's just a path, right? It's just a. But it's two foot nine off the ground or two foot six off 2. the ground. 2.6, I think. Right, so you're fine. You don't need a handrail. You, you yeah, don't. but I think that 
uh, very few requirements require a handrail and also kind of a curb for, um, right. okay. for wheelchairs. Then also then the fire escape would have to be designed to come down onto this landing. Yeah, that's and what they, I was And people would have to exit across the landing and, and down the steps, that which I think is possible. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm getting maybe like you guys don't like that. Well, the, uh, just, <coughs> I, I just, think what, no. what that would end up doing is moving the lift around to that, yeah. um, that west side right. path. The rest of the path then is going to be two foot six off the ground, which then right. we're not going to be able to see. You know, when we see in there, that lift will be at ground level until it gets right up to the building. So we'll, you'll always be able to see the front corner of that building through the gate. And if you put a two foot six rised patio or walkway yeah. through there, then we're blocking the original foundation and that limestone in but front of the building. Don't doesn't the knee wall do that anyway though? The, what this it's south of the lift. How tall the is that wall? Yeah, it's four inches taller yeah, than, than the than the pavement. Right. Okay. Yeah. Four okay. inches taller than the pavement. But, so then it's the only lower a, edge a curb. Okay. All right. Basically. Until you get to the uh, until you get to the lift, right? In the elevation, front entry elevation. Sorry, to me it looked like in this elevation. I, sorry, we just got these yeah. drawings, so we're all just looking at them. Um, it just it, that that's certainly not four inches taller than grade. I'm sorry, I maybe misunderstood your yeah. question. Yep. Four inches taller than. The, the two upper. foot six that the pathway would be at. Yeah. It's, right. It's yes. So, yeah. 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 So, so, yeah, so but what my point is that you're basically going to see that anyway. That yeah. wall would just extend around. But now, if you're saying that w they would need handrails, then you're looking at handrails instead of a lift. Yeah. Um, you're still going to see the lift. Obviously, it's not invisible, just moving it over. Um, but I guess I'm just kind of brainstorming, which maybe isn't, this isn't the right. Uh, it's gross. Platform for that. Thinking, yeah, thinking, I was thinking just, just a that question. Same and idea. It led to brainstorming. Wondering yeah. about <laughs> shifting within the current area, but then you have the door swinging into the egress path from the stairs coming down. Right. Or on the other side, then you end up with a step up and down off of the egress. So yeah, the, there's a lot of tricky things happening. We'll go with the original plan. And one other thing, um, I would be a little concerned about the users, the people that need a lift, yeah. um, are probably mobility impaired. And I'm not sure that I would even want them up on a raised walkway with only a handrail. I hope my mom is not watching tonight because she's who I'm picturing <laughs> walking along that slightly unsteadily. And uh, I'd almost be inclined to ask then for some sort of like a glass guardrail or something, which I don't know, I think would aid the end user, but um, might not be a good solution since it's I did outdoors. And you often see those, in this kind of installation indoors, you often see glass guardrails to keep people on mm -hmm. the path. But I'm not sure that that would work very well outdoors because they would just get dirty and scratched up and, yeah. and kind of a mess. I did want to mention that the one of the drawings we sent you didn't have the glass partition, and uh, it's a fairly new, somewhat new uh, change in the elevator code, which applies to lifts. And so for some reason, even though the lift itself has a 42-inch box around it, for some reason they're requiring the glass or some kind of a, a solid barrier 42 inches above the upper level. So that glass above the tile, the gray tile there in that photograph or in the image is required. Um, I guess it's so that um, when the lift is down, somebody doesn't kind of walk around walk the edge it. of it and mm -hmm. fall into the lift. Sure. But there's no roof or enclosure for it. So you still have to shovel snow out of it. <laughs> All right, one other last question I had in the front. I'm kind of imagining there may want to be some signage someday, and I don't know if the project incorporates any idea for that on the front wall or somewhere else. 
we haven't done that yet, and I'm sure we'll be back to you. Um, and we, we've talked about it in our general meetings, and we're not really sure how to address it. Um, uh, because of the wall, the question is, does it, should it logically go on the wall? We don't want to really put it on the building. Can we have a freestanding sign? Would it, we're not sure yet. Um, Jill asked us also to comment on other work, and I think that um, we're going to do masonry, masonry repair and cleaning all the way around the building. Uh, the chimneys, I believe, will stabilize those. We've had people look, come out and look at the uh, sheet metal work, which is that uh, the, cor or the cornices and uh, tops of the chimneys are sheet metal um, profiles, and the one in the back is particularly bad. Uh, we're going to repair those, repair the eaves, paint, and, uh, repair the freeze board and the brackets. Um, the roof is fairly new. We're not sure that the, uh, the flashing up behind all that work is that well done yet, but um, I think the roof's in good enough shape to, to hold off for a little while on that. Um, but the intent is to do a major cleaning, tuck pointing, um, repair on the exterior. Any other questions for the applicant? All right, thank you. Any members of the public who'd like to speak on this application? All right, seeing none, we'll move to close the public portion. Do we have a commissioner who'd like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Next. Um, I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application for, or the application at 611 East William Street a contributing property in the Division Street Historic District to install a new barrier-free lift in front of the building and temporarily, temporarily remove and reinstall a portion of the courtyard wall, um, moving their proposed uh, section to remove to the far east corner of the wall to be removed instead, and uh, building foundation. As proposed, uh, the work is compatible in exterior design and arrangement, texture, material, and relationship to the rest of the building and the surrounding area and meets the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation, in particular standards 1, 9, and 10, and the historic Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines for barrier-free accommodations. Support. Seconded by Commissioner White. Discussion on the motion. I'll say that I think that this project meets our guidelines and just to thank Gary and the new owners for their attention to all the details and making sure that the project can meet their needs and meet our guidelines. Any other discussion? All right, seeing none, we'll move to vote. All those in favor, please say yes. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion passes. Your application is approved. Please remember to pull any required building permits and you'll receive written notice from the city. Thank you. We have now F3, 219 Crest Street, a rear deck. Jill, if you'd give the staff report, please. This two-story gable front house features steeply pitched pedimented front gables, shed dormers on both sides with corner returns, a red brick chimney centered on the front elevation, flanked by small quarter-round windows and wooden vertical slat shutters. House first appears in the 1924 Polk Directory as vacant. In 1925, Frank and Lillian Hepler lived there. Mr. Hepler ran the Frank Hepler Restaurant at 409 East Jefferson, which is now the site of the U of M Institute for Social Research. In 2016, staff approved applications for wall vents and to replace a non-original rear picture window with a slider. Sites on the east side of Crest, south of West Washington and north of Buena Vista, and the applicant is seeking HCC approval to construct a 16-foot by 14-foot deck behind the rear of the house to access from a previously installed patio door. <clears throat> here is the back of the house right now. So this was a picture window here, um, and I did run it by the officers to make sure that it was appropriate to um, install uh, sliding patio doors there, but they thought, yes, it was. So these are new patio doors. You can see the um, lovely piece of picket fence across it to keep people from falling out. So now the owners are to the point where they'd like to add a deck on the back of the house here. 
Here's another picture of the yard. They've been doing some work back there. The houses on either side are deeper than this house. You can see this is the neighbor to the north. And this is the general area of the deck. Um, the drawings are a little bit of a leap of faith. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I have uh, discussed with Sherry, the, one of the owners though, um, she's read all the guidelines and, and she knows them better than most of our applicants. <laughs> so I think that um, mostly what you're looking at here is the appropriateness of putting a 16 by 14 foot deck in this location on the back of this house. And when a building permit application comes in and it'll get run by me anyway, I will confirm that it meets the guidelines for like guardrail design and, and things like that. Um, decks aren't too complicated and, and Sherry gets it. <laughs> so I don't think that that is going to cause any problems. Um, uh, it's 30 inches off the ground, there will be a 42 inch, uh, there will be a, a guardrail on top of that. Um, and it is the most straightforward of decks. The original application specified uh, an all wood um, treated lumber deck, or actually a cedar deck, um, but the owners inquired about using uh, composite material instead, which I am perfectly fine with as long as the design meets the guidelines because it's clearly not original and it's completely behind the house. So um, the way the, uh, let's see, the way the motion is suggested um, includes both a, a wood or a composite deck. It is freestanding, it's not hanging off of the house. Uh, the Secretary of Interior standards numbers nine and 10, I've already read to you. The Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines for decks say that it's appropriate to install a deck in the rear of the property that's subordinate in proportion to the building, installing a deck that is freestanding so that it does not damage historic materials, and installing railings made of wood. Custom railing designs will be reviewed case by case. It's also appropriate to use railings that have a chamfered top and bottom rail and simple square or round spindles that are attached to the underside and top of the rails and install, installing flooring made of wood or composite wood. Um, on the one about the railings, cust uh, installing railings made of wood, I think when we wrote these design guidelines, I at least hadn't yet seen very many composite railings that actually kind of looked like wood. They didn't look, um, they, they weren't really, um, accomplishing what the guidelines were looking for. And I think that that has changed because materials have gotten a little more advanced, um, the non-wood materials. So um, I am not too concerned if they went with all composite or if they went with a, a combination of composite and wood or all wood. And staff recommends approval of the application since the deck is appropriately designed, scaled, and removable. The work is compatible in exterior design arrangement material in relationship to the rest of the site and meets the Secretary of Interior Standards and Guidelines and the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines. Thank you. Thank you. We have Commissioners Cope and White on the Review Committee. If you guys would give the Review Committee report, please. Uh, I don't believe there's much, too much to add on this. Uh, it's gonna be a nice deck in the yard for the family and kids and it's appropriately sized. Uh, if you go back to the drawing <clears throat> just see that it looks like it's coming out flush from the back corner. I don't know if this should be in comments or not, but it, I would like to see it inset from the corner. Um, I guess that would differentiate from what this picture is showing. Um, maybe just moved in six inches. Because when the railings go up, it'll, from the back of the house or the side, I believe it'll kind of look like a long wall once the, the railings go up. Um, but other than that, I think it's, uh, uh, I agree with Jill and staff's report. Yeah, I agree with uh, Jill and Max's report. Uh, I support this application. Thank you. Do we have the applicant present? If you would sign in and state your name aloud for the record, please. Sure. My name is Sherry Osher. And if you have anything you'd like to add, or comments on the review committee report or the staff report, you may do so. Um, I The only comment is um, if it is recommended that we move it, um, that would be what the north side, mm -hmm. move it six inches, that's that's fine on, on our end as well. Okay. 
Yeah, usually we try, especially if it's an addition, but I think it's kind of the same principle to keep that corner trim board visible, which shows the edge of the house. Any questions for the applicant? Just to confirm, it sounds like from the drawing that we have, it'd be a simple design with wood picket on the rail. Uh, yes, or composite. But or yes. composite, mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions for the applicant? All right, thank you. Thank you. Any members of the public who'd like to speak on this application? All right, seeing none, we'll close the public portion. Do we have a commissioner who'd like to make a motion? Dave? Sure. I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 219 Crest Avenue, a contributing property in the Old West Side Historic District, to construct a wood or composite deck off the rear addition of the house as detailed in the applicant's submittal. The work is compatible in exterior design arrangement material in relationship to the building and the surrounding area and meets the Secretary of Interior's standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular standards 9 and 10 and the Ann Arbor Historic District guidelines, design guidelines, for decks and patios. Support. Seconded by Commissioner White. Discussion on the motion. I think it's pretty straightforward. Looks like <laughs> it's, it's going straight to be a nice deck. <clears throat> I agree. And just for all of our loyal viewers who aren't here today, this is a deck on the rear of the house and not in a visible area. And if you have questions about composite decking and whether it's appropriate for your house, you can call Jill. <laughs> all right, we'll move to vote. All those in favor, please say yes. 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 Those opposed, say no. The motion carries. Your application is approved. Please remember to pull any building permits, and you'll receive written notice from city. Thank you. Next up, we have 508 3rd Street, a rear addition. Jill, if you'd please give the staff report. <clears throat> this two-story home features simple Italianate details like wide board trim under the eaves and a gable front. Around the 1920s, the wraparound stone porch was added. It appears in the 1894 Polk Directory and may be older as 58 3rd Street, the home of August Tessimer, a laborer. Tessimer's lived in the house until at least 1940. An application to the uh, HDC in March of 2017 for a larger rear addition was denied. Properties on the west side of 3rd Street, south of West Jefferson, and north of West Madison. The applicant is seeking HDC approval to add a one-story rear addition, a 12 by 12 foot brick patio, remove two non-original windows and replace them with two nearby windows, replace a non-original window and door on the second floor rear elevation with a centered French door, Replace a non-original window in the original opening on the first floor north elevation with a shorter window. Replace a non-original second story window on the south elevation with a shorter window. And replace the chain link fence with a black metal picket fence. They have a lot of photos of this house <laughs> <laughs> at this point. Uh, it's getting lusher and lusher <laughs> as we go out. Um, you'll recall, I'm not gonna talk about these pictures a lot, but they're here if we need to refer back to them. Just note, um, these, this window is in an original opening. It's proposed to be shortened to accommodate a kitchen counter. These two windows would be removed and two separated double hung windows that match the size of the new kitchen window um, would be installed on that side. It's the back of the house and the back corner. This is a bunny that was hanging out with us in the yard. Um, Commissioner Cope is standing here at about the extent um, that the new addition um, would extend out into the side yard. And so here we have the site view. Um, garage work was already approved by the commission at an earlier meeting. Um, the addition is on the back here. It wraps around the back corner. This is a patio that connects the addition with the garage. The aluminum, the new metal aluminum fence goes um, most of the way around the site and seems to cut back here at the garage and goes around the front yard and cuts back at the front corner, which is, I believe, where it does right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the same as right now. Mm -hmm. Front elevation um, existing is on top, proposed is on the bottom. They've uh, kept that, that low-hipped roof um, that, came, uh, that was discussed in an earlier meeting. Looks like there's a Bilco door here to the side. 
This is the south elevation. Uh, this window would need to be replaced and shortened to accommodate the new hip roof below it. It's not an original window. It may be an original opening, but it's been replaced. There's a little deck going out on the back here um, from the existing second floor. There's a small porch on the back. Uh, the existing patio door and window are replaced with a single patio door that's a little more centered. A uh, single light window, uh, single light door on the back. Oh yeah, here's the bilco going out to the side. And here's that pair of windows that would be split up. And here's the slightly shortened window in the kitchen. Pretty straightforward. Small deck on the back with a couple of stairs coming down. Um, this proposal again converts a duplex back to a single family home. The, um, the sum of the post-1945 additions are 27% of the original floor area of the house. And the sum of the floor area post-1945 is at 53%. The addition features, features cementitious lap siding that matches the reveal of the original wood siding, aluminum clad Jeldwin windows, a roof deck access through the second floor, and a rear porch. The design of the addition and proportions of the windows are simple and appropriate. Uh, I think I mentioned pretty much everything else that's in here. Um, with the exception of um, removing the chain link fence is great. I would love to see that go. It's much appreciated. Um, new fence location is appropriate, um, but details aren't provided about the design or height. So the fence may not exceed 36 inches in the front along the street per the HTC design guidelines. And staff recommends limiting the aluminum picket fence to the height of the current chain link fence since it's not designed for privacy, but rather for, um, uh, for security, I guess you'd say. If the Historic District Commission finds that black aluminum is an acceptable material, an additional application for HTC staff approval will be required with the zoning compliance permit that indicates the height and design of the fence. So the Secretary of the Interior standards that best apply are numbers 2, 9, and 10, and I've read all of those to you. The guidelines for additions recommend constructing a new addition so that there's the least possible loss of historic materials so that character defining features are not obscured, damaged, or destroyed. Also locating the attached exterior addition at the rear or on an inconspicuous side of a historic building. And designing new additions in a manner that makes clear what is historic and what is new. Also considering the attached exterior addition both in terms of the <coughs> new use and the appearance of other buildings in the historic district. Design may be contemporary or may reference design motifs from the historic building. Not recommended is attaching a new addition so that the character defining features of the historic building are obscured, damaged, or destroyed. From the Secretary of Interior's guidelines for district or neighborhood setting, not recommended is introducing new construction into historic districts that's visually incompatible or that destroys historic relationships. And from the Ann Arbor Historic District de Design Guidelines, for all additions, it's appropriate to limit the size and scale of the addition in relationship to the historic building so it does not diminish or visually overpower the building or the district. The addition's footprint should not exceed one half of the original building's footprint or one half of the original building's floor area. Okay, that's it. Um, staff's uh, recommendation is um, definitely approval of this application. I think that they've sort of hit it out of the park this time. Um, I'm okay with shortening this one kitchen window uh, just for the sake of functionality on the inside. And I like that these two windows uh, will be sort of compatible with it in t terms of size. Uh, it's certainly a low-key and compatible design with neighboring historic structures. Um, it's distinguished by materials and um, other design um, from the original, so I don't think there will be any confusion, but it's certainly extremely compatible and will blend in well with it. So staff uh, recommends approval of the application in whole. Thank you. Thank you. We had Commissioners Cope and White on the review committee. If you guys would give the review committee a report, please. 
Um, <clears throat> uh, third time we've seen it, the house, I think, now? Second application. Second application. Yeah. Um, I think we've, I agree with, uh, with Jill, um, Jill staff report on this one. Um, we've spoke about the windows before, um, and we've spoke about the fencing before. Uh, I believe the getting you guys down to the 53%, I think you guys did a fabulous job doing that. And um, I think that was our biggest hang up with the last application as well. I support uh, Jill and Max, and I recommend uh, approval of this application. Thank you. And I think we have the applicants present. If we could have someone step forward, please. State your name loud for the record and sign in. Okay. Hi, I'm Larry Bates. This is my wife, Catherine Bates. Hi. Um, we're delighted <laughs> that you like the revisions. Um, we're excited to move here and to renovate the place and to establish a new homestead for our family here. So I think that's all I have to say. It's just thank you for your consideration. Great. Any questions for the applicant? All right. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Any members of the public who'd like to speak on this application? Seeing none, we'll close the public portion. Do we have a commissioner who'd like to make a motion? Sure. Uh, I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 508 Third Street, a contributing property in the Old West Side Historic District, to add a one-story rear addition, add a 12 foot by 12 foot brick patio, remove two non-original windows on a rear addition, and replace them with two windows in close proximity, replace a non-original window and door on the second floor real, rear elevation with a centered French door, Replace a non-original window in the original opening on the first floor north elevation with a shorter window. Replace a non-original second story window on the south elevation with a shorter window. And replace the chain link fence with a black aluminum picket fence. On the condition that an additional certificate of appropriateness is obtained from staff for the height and design of the fence. The work as conditioned is compatible in exterior design, arrangement materials, and relationship to the house and the surrounding area and meets the City of Ann Arbor Historic D District design guidelines for all additions, architectural details, and residential patios, and the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation and Guidelines for Rehabilitating Historic Buildings, in particular standards 2, 9, and 10, and the guidelines for new additions, district or neighborhood settings, and windows. Support. Seconded by Commissioner White. Discussion on the motion. No? I had a, I had a question for staff about the fence. Mm -hmm. So um, just ex can you summarize what the, what the requirement is that I, I understand that you're saying we, you are recommending that the, the new fence be the same height as the chain link fence? Mm -hmm. How does that kind of work itself out in terms of actually happening? Uh, I probably should have proposed it in the motion. Okay, I, I just will. <laughs> um, uh, unless you'd like to have the applicants just what? ask them if they would agree to that. So in the backyard, a fence up to six feet right. uh, is, is possible under the fence code and historic district guidelines, but I've never seen a six foot metal <laughs> fence yeah. in a backyard, and I don't know that that's a compatible design element. I'm, I, I've got no issues with a lower one because everyone's used to looking at the chain link back there anyway. Yeah. And it's gonna have great opacity, so I'm not concerned about that at all. Right. I, I just don't want it to look like a castle wall, you know, um, because it is an unusual material, especially on a, a, a wood house. Often you see metal fences around uh, masonry mm -hmm. houses. Right or much older houses. So this is a little bit of a deviation from that, but uh, I'm very happy that the chain link might go away, and I think that this is definitely a step in the right direction. In the motion, you say on the condition that an additional certificate of appropriateness is obtained from staff. So that does for, staff. for height and design of the mm -hmm. fence. So, so yeah, then they would the, just submit yeah. that, and you would yeah. either bring it back here or Right, I suppose, I suppose if they wanted to 
um, propose a six foot fence, I would just not sign off on it at the staff okay. level because I don't think it would be appropriate. Okay. So something that's similar to what's there now. It doesn't have to be exactly mm -hmm. the same, but. The, the porch, just to, for the record, the porch is ma a masonry porch. And so mm -hmm. I do see, I think that that fence will look good because of the porch. Mm -hmm. um, had it still been probably the original wood porch, it, I agree, it, there's something off there, but um, yeah. to me, that you know, my own opinion with the with the stone porch, I think it'll look good. I, I would consider this to be uh, one of those case by case right. basis kind of fences. If the next door neighbors with a wood porch came in and said we want a fence just like theirs, yeah. I might say, well, you're going to have to ask the commission because it's not sort of typical hmm. historic materials for a fence. Right. One comment I'll add, just looking at the comparison to the last application we have, where I think there's some really important improvement. When you're looking back and forth at our north and our west elevations, especially the west, I think this plan makes a lot more sense and it feels like the scale is going to make a lot more sense standing in the backyard and <clears throat> understanding what's there and having it look like something that you'd expect to see in the neighborhood. And I think those two elevations really look like what I expect and what meets our guidelines. And aside from just size, I think that the design has actually been improved with this application. Other discussion? All right, seeing none, we'll move to vote. All those in favor, please say yes. 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 Those opposed, say no. The motion carries. Your application is approved. You'll receive written notice from city staff. And please remember to pull all required building permits. Thank you. Nice job, guys. Thank you. Mark, would you like a cookie before you go? You didn't get one before the meeting. Mark. She also offered you a cookie. Would you like a cookie? You're the only person in the audience who didn't get one. <laughs> They're made by a friend of mine who likes to support the Historic District Commission through cookies. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for coming in. Next up, we have F5203 East Washington Street, a new business sign. Jill, if you'd please give the staff report. This two-story Queen Anne commercial building was built in 1893 and originally had a finial on the corner turret with a cow on it advertising the, the Holtzel Meat Market. It was the home of Harry's Army Surplus for many years. Then in 1990, Metzger's expanded into the space from number 203 next door. In 1999, Metzger's closed and the space was used for several different restaurants and bars, recently the arena and then the curtain call. Sites on the northeast corner of East Washington Street and North 4th Avenue. And the applicant is seeking HGC approval to install 12 LED accent lights on the six windows along each building facade. Each would provide a narrow band of light flanking the windows along the first floor. The applicant also seeks approval to paint a 187 square foot logo directly on the brick along the 4th Avenue facade near the corner. New awnings are being proposed for ground level windows, which are black in color, with some featuring the business name along the valence. The storefront at 203 would have the modern wood shingles removed and the original steel beam exposed, and an awning installed at the same height as the awning on 201 immediately west. Finally, a wall sign and two projecting signs are proposed, one projecting from the second floor facing East Washington and an additional sign projecting over the entry door to the corner of the building. All right, so here we are on East Washington, and 4th Avenue is around the corner. Um, take note of this storefront. See it, how it has a whole bunch of shingles infilling and a little bit down this column here. Um, clearly not original. The, the whole storefront is not original. It's, it's fairly modern. Um, I'm not sure what went on here. Just a few years ago, there were, there were wood panels, like plywood, covering up all of these shingles. That was equally as inappropriate. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little puzzled by this, but um, that's neither here nor there. You can see that right now there are awnings on the first floor windows mar marching all the way around the building. They recently took this one off. It was at a slightly higher elevation, and it looked um, kind of awkward next to this one because it was at the wrong height. Um, there is on the second floor a residential condominium and they have a roof deck up here on the top. There's a sign proposed to go over the front door here, um, which is 
uh, it's just sort of a temporary sign right now. Um, the, the, the current bar owners are operating curtain call, but they're, they're proposing to change it to Haymaker. Uh, this is a very cool window up above, and the sign is designed to fit underneath that quite nicely. Here's that non-original shingle stuff on this other storefront. So there are a bunch of different work items here. So, uh, I'm going to start with the easy stuff first. That is black awnings are proposed to be installed all the way around the building. And they're at uh, compatible heights. And um, that would normally just be a staff approval. But since they were going through this process anyway, they included the whole deal on here so you could see what it would look like. Uh, staff thinks that those are totally appropriate. Uh, next are some signs. This is painted on the wall. There was a large arena sign painted on the wall. And there's another sign proposed here, a blade sign where there is or was an arena sign in neon. It would say Haymaker, public house. Um, and then the third sign is over the doorway here. You can see this is not flat, it's slightly rounded. You can see the letters there, Haymaker on the outside. And the dog is this black band behind. So the dog is six or eight inches behind the slightly rounded sign, just to give it a little bit of relief and draw a little more attention to it. The, um, the, the Haymaker, uh, the blade sign is, uh, is not backlit. It's, um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Channel cut. Uh, no, it's not channel cut. It's, it's, um, it's opaque letters that are lit from behind. Um, uh, like Vault of Midnight and bat no, it's not backlit, but it's a illuminated oh, cabinet, like the silhouette. Silo yeah, yeah, that's a good the word. Glowing right, right, no, where the light is behind a it. solid letter, okay. so the the okay. back is is glows slightly, and you see the letters in dark and mm -hmm. sort of relief, um, which there are several others of downtown, and this sign is the same. Uh, proportions as the arena sign is right now. Um, these little lights are behind the haymaker sign. Um, inside each of these letters is individual amber LED bulbs with one and a half inch deep painted stainless steel open face letters, letter forms. These guys are just flat acrylic letters. So think um, tapas mm. with the little mm -hmm. bulbs inside, although these are not as big as that. So it's, it's a larger number of small bulbs. Um, I have um, no objections to either of these signs, and I feel that they're both very appropriate for the building. And indeed, they're the same size or smaller than what's been there in the recent past. Um, the third item is they'd like to use some LED light strips. So um, the applicants are not here tonight, which surprises me a little bit, because they were going to bring samples into the meeting. So I'm wondering if there's been some mix-up. Uh, but the, the LED lights are proposed to go where these lines are on the top. These would slightly uplight this brick um, corbeling or whatever you want to call it. Um, that would be below the cornice. There's another line along the foundation near the street, which would uh, make the, the sidewalk and the lower bricks slightly illuminated. And then inside each of the windows is a pair of vertical LED strips to make, to cast a little glow on the window framing. And that's true on the front as well. This one little piece near the cornice has a strip, and then inside these picture windows each have that lighting. The Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines address floodlights, but not smaller controlled areas of light. Um, since receiving this application, I've talked to people that uh, have seen these successfully installed and very unsuccessfully installed, uh, just depending on the light levels. And we don't really have any information on the level of light that would be used to illuminate these. Uh, 
Uh, there's also no information given on how it would be attached to the building. And it says that they're contained in an extrusion, and I don't know what the extrusion would look like because I was hoping to see a sample to hear more about that. Um, Is it possible for us to uh, strip that portion out for the light, uh, the light strips and just do the signs? That's, that's very possible. Mm -hmm. If um, when you guys get to the motion, if, if you'd like to consider, yeah. Um, and, and possibly postponing that until next month's meeting. And since you've had to listen to me ramble about it this far, if there's more information that you'd like about these LED light strips that I haven't already mentioned, um, when it's your commissioner discussion, sure. please bring it up so I can get that back Sounds to good. them so that they can come back with it. Uh, and otherwise, um, the staff thinks that the awnings are compatible with the building, set within the window openings, and correctly, correctly proportioned. Let's see if I have some standards and guidelines. Numbers one, two, nine, uh, which I've all read to you. Uh, storefronts from the Secretary of Interior um, not recommended as introducing a new design that's incompatible in size, scale, material, and color, or using inappropriately scaled signs and logos that obscure, damage, or destroy character-defining features. Uh, for lighting, it's appropriate to attach light fixtures so historic fabric is not damaged or destroyed. And when installing a new light fixture where there is no historic light fixture, using a fixture that is inconspicuous or complements the style and character of the resource. When introducing new site lighting, using fixtures that are compatible with the scale and historic character of the district. Not appropriate is introducing flood lighting. All flood lights should be shielded and aimed down or cutting through character defining features to install lighting. For signs, it's appropriate to install signage that's subordinate to the overall building composition and mounting signs to fit within existing architectural features, using the shape of the sign to help reinforce the horizontal lines of moldings and transoms seen along the street. I think it does that very well. Uh, one last thing to talk about is this storefront uh, at 203, the old Metzger's. So they're proposing to take off all of this shingled stuff here and figure out what's underneath. Um, and it's likely that they're not gonna find much except a steel beam that is running here below the windows that you can see in old photographs. It's a pretty good bet that they've taken out everything else below that. Um, I'm sorry, that's the soffit detail. It's this one back here that's slightly recessed. Since this storefront does not match at all, um, but even so, having that steel beam exposed and then having them match that uh, Safa detail that's a little bit interesting up here below the the sills of these upper windows uh, would be a big improvement and then uh, they would fit the awning into the the space correctly put it at the same height as this one and uh, the applicant has shown up in the nick of time <laughs> so um, staff does recommend approval of the awning storefront modifications and the uh, signs thank you Thing that's interesting in that last picture, Jill, you had, you can see in the right some of what I don't know if that was an interesting. I don't know what Which, was up what, there. Like this part? That little, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like a little down. little mm. pendle that sticks down or something. It I is. There were a couple of those uh, kind of supporting an interesting cornice. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. it had a, a much more elaborate. Well, I think it had a cornice, yeah. and it looks like it was very elaborate up mm. there. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. We have other old photos of the building, um, but they're they're mostly of this building next door. Mm -hmm. All right, thank All you. Right. We had Commissioners Cope and White on the review committee. If you guys could give the review committee report, please. I agree with Jill. Uh, I like the project, but I'm concerned about the LED light strips. Uh, and I think it's gonna be a nice improvement. Commissioner Cope. Um, yeah, I agree with the, the staff findings. Uh, the, um, I think as we get into further discussion, um, changing, making a motion to, to have a separate discussion on the LED lighting uh, from the awning and signage, I think would be appropriate for this job, for this application, I guess. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. See, we have the applicant. If you'd please step forward, state your name aloud for the record, and sign in. Uh, 
Uh, my name is W. A. P. John. I am the fabricator of the signage project. Again, just to clarify, are you involved in the signage project and not the lighting project? Both, both. Okay, both. Yep. Okay, I think what we're going to do, just to let you know, we're going to have two separate motions and discussions about the different portions of the application. Okay. So to start out on either part, if there's anything you want to add to the staff report. A or couple that. things. Uh, yeah. Since we uh, make, made the application, the owners have decided to drop the dog um, <laughs> as part of the identity. <clears throat> They'll keep it on the graphic, but on the sign, they've decided it's too much, and so it's not going to be there. All right. Questions for the applicant? Just what you just said. On the, the big sign on the wall No. will not have... The, the, the logo will stay in the wall. Got it. Okay. But, but above the sign, that dog is going to go. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And there also is a change to the lighting, too, which I can discuss. Sure. Um, sure. Uh, we, we're not going to do the upper level one. We went and finally had inspection of the property, and you can't do it gracefully. Um, we just can't pierce through that brick and do it in a nice way. Whereas down below, because it is low voltage, we can come through and do it. So all you see is simply a piece of molding. There's no conduit, nothing like that. So that's going to be limited. Okay. Other questions for the applicant? Do you have an example of the lighting? I room? do. Yep. I can Thank show you. you. Uh, I, I made this to show the owner sort of the effect. Um, it is, um, it's, we plug somewhere I can find. Yeah, there's one on the floor. Uh, uh, one there. I wouldn't stick my hand in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have them up here behind the okay. Well, let's edge here. Yeah. yeah. So How long of a cord you got? Put one right here. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions while I do this? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> you're, you're saying just have it on the on the ground floor. And nothing at the top of the building, okay. and, so, and then around the windows. Sure lights the sidewalk pretty much. It'll be about a foot off the ground, and it'll pretty much light the sidewalk. And then there are vertical strips that go in the windows and light the mullions. And they'll be positioned in such a way so all they do is all they appear to be is another sort of a vertical element, painting the same color as the trim. Mm -hmm. And they'll be stand off with screws, and there'll be no fasteners, so they look very clean. Um, and then the other major thing here is that this is rather bright, as I'll show you, and we can dim this back so it won't be as bright as you see it here. I think both on the windows and on the kind of trim bottom detail, yep. having it be glaring bright would probably be a concern for us. Oh, I, I agree. Yeah. I mean, this is strictly sort of a visual element, and the owners are sensitive to that. We, we, you know, we all, we're all trying to do this as sort of gracefully as we can. So let's try this plug. Uh, this is polarity here, so it doesn't light up at the switch polarity. Okay. Yep. Okay, so what this shows, it shows the color of the LEDs. A lot of LEDs you see are very cold. This is a, a warm color. Is it possible for you to, to mock it up like against the podium, sort of at the you height that it would be? Yeah. If I could unravel this, that, that would be helpful, yeah. I think. Yeah. I, I had hoped actually to meet the folks out there if you want to actually go out to the site. We were there on Monday, I believe. But, so you can see the effect it gets, and, and that's pretty bright. Um, <coughs> the idea is we, we sort of light the trim and then the brick, which sticks out about this far. And, and I see this being fairly close like this. So during daylight, it simply appears as sort of element. Um, I, I've got a triangular piece of, of angle just to hide it. Um, I'm going to try to find a rectangular one. So it has a flat surface. You see, instead of pointed, because this to me looks a little bit too contemporary if, it, if the angle's facing forward. So indeed, it will probably be more like this. So it'll be a flat. Flat face. That's what we're going to see the light being reflected by. Um, well, you'll see it pretty much. This is brown paint right now. So 
there's it's not much we're reflecting off obviously light wood, yeah. but the paint itself is going to be brown. So it's lit, but it's not that much. And I say this is too bright. Yeah. And we can dim this back. So the point is, is give a little bit of visual interest to the building without without too much. Because the building is kind of plain as it were, and they want to show kind of a little bit of excitement. So can you give us the the horizontal sidewalk effect? Yep. Would it be that low, or how, how high off the it's ground? It's going to be about that low, because okay. there, there's a point off the sidewalk in which there is, where the building's constructed, there's a cement footing. Yeah. And we're going to sort of run along next to that. So, it's so you're going to be on the outside of the footing? Pardon? You're going, to be on, you're going to have that on the outside of the footing? Uh, no, it's going to be, um, it's going to be, no, it's going to be above the footing. Okay. Okay. So, and again, here, this will be a U channel instead of a B channel, so it'll be a little Squirt one like that, and it'll be set right up against the edge. Um, whether or not you want to get a little bit of glow to it, I mean, right now, the fact that I see that line up there, I, I, the light up there, I don't like it. So you won't see that. Right? So that's just paint. Like the footing, the, you can't, it kind of blends so in with, the, okay. with the curve. It'll be essentially it's lighting up like up here. Yep, some right of there. the brick, That's the top of the goes footing, all the way and then possibly some of yeah, the sidewalk, but it's very soft. The visual. Yeah. 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 Yes. It's very helpful. Okay. Yeah, it, the, the brightness, and you know, during the daytime, everyone's going to see a little rail there. Yeah. It is a yeah, we can have our discussion and voice my concerns. So this discussion. is just plain bare aluminum that you no, have? No, no. I'll be painting the same color as the trim and then yeah. the work. Okay, so you have aluminum channel paint. Correct. Yep. Okay. So it'll pretty much disappear. And again, no conduit book to it. So we can punch through down low through the mortar joints and run 12 volt wires through it. And so we don't have to have a large conduit. Thank you for that. Sure. Thank you. For Mr. Wyko. <laughs> Any other questions? I guess one question too. The letters where they're going to have interior lighting kind of in a channel, I think. Correct. Would it be a similar color temperature for what the LEDs we saw? Uh, it, no, actually it's going to be more amber. Okay, it, it, good. It's going to be sort of a golden paint. Yeah. And then we're going to get amber LEDs. And then you'd still plan to do the four LED spots and not the one for the dog? Uh, correct. And actually, I've got maybe I have a few more. Let me show you. Maybe just a second. Okay. Sorry. Don't worry. Okay. It's a pretty small. Yeah, pretty small one. Mm -hmm. And they'll be right, actually, now since I got this, they'll be right in the bottom of, of, the, of, of the channel, of the curved piece of metal. Mm -hmm. Okay. And like mm -hmm. one for one got it. Yeah. Okay. And are those, do you know the approximate Voltage. lumens or how bright they are? Are they adjustable? Uh, they're adjustable and you dim them and, that's, and then they point. You okay. Point them which way. So. Okay. And again, the idea is sort of broadly light it, but not get too hot with it. Yeah. Sounds good. Any other questions? All right. Anything else to add? Uh, I think that's it. All right. Thank you. Sure. Seeing no other members of the public at this point, we'll close the public portion. Do we have a commissioner who'd like to make a motion? Um, I will make a motion. Um, I'd actually like to make two motions um, on this project still. I'll uh, make the first motion and then we'll have a discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 203 East Washington <coughs> in the Main Street Historic District to install new, <coughs> new business signs and awnings as proposed and conditioned work as the conditioned the work is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, texture, and material in relationship to the surrounding resources and meets the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines 
and the Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation and Guidelines for Rehabilitating uh, Historic Buildings, in particular standards, standards 1, 2, 9, and 10, and the guidelines for storefronts. Support. Seconded by Commissioner White. Discussion on the motion. Um, I'll go first. Uh, with the signage and the awnings and, I, and everything, I believe it's, and it's, it's appropriate. And uh, the, the one thing is uh, seeing how bright or having a, the, the lighting and the brightness of the lighting with LEDs is kind of unpredictable because even small little teeny LEDs can be like wham. Mm -hmm. Um, so backlighting the sign, I think it's, um, I'd like to see, you know, how much light you're actually putting off on those and if they are dimmable. Be a, a yeah. Dim yeah. Right and then, um, you know, other than that, I think the, the signs and awnings and everything, I, 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 there's no issue with them at all. And one comment I'd have on the blade sign, it is a little bit thicker than some that we've seen. And it, I think at some point, it's something we may want to be aware of because this one is, I think, 16 inches wide. So we'll Wh plus which another. sign are you referring to? The blade sign up high on the oh, second so, level. Yeah. With the letters sticking off, it's almost another two. So it's about 18 inches total. And it's starting to feel kind of heavy on the side of the building. And I don't know if other commissioners have thoughts about that one. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Um, actually, that could, be, that, could, that could be thinned up because prior to this point that we had internally lit letters and then we found out we couldn't do it. So we went to the exposed um, uh, interior lights like you see it. So it no longer has to be that, that thick. And I agree, it looks pretty, pretty bulky up there. I think we could reduce that at least by a third, if not more, and make it a little bit thinner because you're right, it doesn't need to be that thick. Yeah, I, th Agreed. I don't think you'd want it too thin. Like it should just, it should feel right, right. but it's getting kind of to hefty, be. hefty, right? Something yeah. like that, you know? It's whatever, structurally can build it well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if it's possible to pull, I would think even at least two inches or maybe a little more yep. out of it, I think you'd have an improved look from the street Agreed. straight on. We can make that change. Should I amend my, my motion? Um, yeah, or we can offer an option, maybe, if it's, or it can be a thinner blade sign. Um, how about if it said something like, install new business signs and awnings as proposed? Um, With the condition of? blade sign having a reduction in size or in, in depth and thickness thickness that's yeah. yeah. it's, it's, it's it's kind of I'd almost rather just leave it out of the motion because I feel like that's so fuzzy yeah, yeah me too like because then to meet that he could make it a quarter of an inch thinner yeah. <laughs> you know sure. it's, and um, well, I guess I'm, I'm finally uh, have uh, staff look at that. You know what your your new dimensions are going to be. For sure. Yeah, yeah I don't what know you that it's such okay. a concern of mine that I vote down this whole thing. But I'm just thinking it's a way that you may be able to improve your design a little bit. Well, yeah. how about I come back with the plans, which go then to the building department, and Jill has to sign off on it. So then yeah. you'll yeah. see them. Yeah, yeah. that's right? good. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. That'll yeah. work. That'll work. Good. Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion? Yeah, I'd like to just state for the record that the um, the windows on the first story of this building, maybe reiterate for the record, I'm not sure if this has been mentioned, but it, it appears like the second story windows, uh, if not original, at least they look like double hungs, maybe they're wood double hungs. They are or, wood double hungs. Yeah, exactly. and then on the first story here, which is where we're talking about applying uh, the aluminum channel to, those windows all appear to be modern aluminum windows. So we're not talking about um, covering up or perhaps destroying any historic character defining features to put these window strips on it. I'm just stating that uh, for the record because obviously there are some 
storefronts that have original molding yep. that you just wouldn't want to be applying yeah. this to. But this is not the case. It's just they're modern aluminum windows, and they almost, I think they will be basically invisible um, because the window's aluminum, and it sounds like this U channel is going to be painted yep. the same, same color. color. And, yep. um, I, I think that that, um, you know, I, I support, you know, at least that part of the project for sure. I thought that three of those windows were fixed double hung wood windows, aren't, aren't they? They are. The yeah, three that's, on, that's on what the I thought. Street. On the, yep. on the okay. fourth half side, fourth those half, are yep. fixed double hung wood windows. Okay. Which I, I believe are, um, I don't think, I don't know if they're original, but yeah. they're definitely part of the, the historic the, uh, look of the building. The trim there, they're flat. It's so flat it's trim. flat painted yeah. brown wood. Okay. There's no detail to them. Right. Yep. Yeah. Like a, there's no brick mold detail. It's just yeah. Just the, the upper windows are flat too. Right. With right. The brick mold detail. Yep. Okay. Have. Okay. Good. Very familiar. With Another the discussion on the motion. So to clarify, Max, what part are we excluding from this? The lighting. All the lighting is yes. not the directly involved with the sign, right? All the lighting is not directly involved okay. with the signage. Sounds good. Any further discussion? All right, we'll move to a vote on this portion of the application. All those in favor say yes. 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 Those opposed say no. The signage portion and awnings and other work, everything except the decorative lighting has been approved. Then we'll move on to uh, another motion to cover the balance of the work. Um, I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 203 East Washington in the Main Street Historic District to install 12 LED accent lights on the condition that all installation <clears throat> that all installation and new penetrations for hookup are done through mortar joints, not masonry or stone units. Um, <clears throat> The as condition, the work is compatible in exterior design arrangement, texture, and material relationship to the surrounding resources and meets the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines and particular standards for signs and lighting, and the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitations uh, and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings. Uh, I don't believe that the standards go with the lighting, but in particular standards one, two, nine, and ten, and the guidelines for storefronts. Support. Seconded by Commissioner White. And yeah. I think, Max, just to confirm, so it's six windows and the bottom horizontal run. Correct. As we kind of had an update. Yep, yep. So and the upper run has been okay. removed. Uh, I think it's more than six windows, isn't it? Um, I have 12 e like LED six, three, accent four. lights here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, okay. Yep. I see six. The two on Washington and four on 4th. One, two, three, four on 4th. Yep. Okay. Discussion on the motion. I guess, I guess my concern um, with them is that we're I know that the strips are very small and they're out of the way and going to be painted um, and, and installed through mortar joints, uh, but the, particularly the, the shorter one um, along the sidewalk, um, I think it's, if you go to the, uh, the, the design guideline, um, cutting through character defining features and starting to install uh, lighting. I think that like lower facade and that curb is a character defining feature of this building and that that strip is going to go right through if you look at the north or the west west elevation that is the wait a second that's south that's south that's west the fourth ad yep yeah um you're kind of you know behind that very back window and kind of i think where that curb is, where it follows that curb, I just okay. I just think it's a feature of the building. And being so low to the ground, I understand the 
the the want to to draw people to it, um, but at the same time, it, it just in the winter things getting snagged, pulled off. You know, I think it could create um, an issue down the road, and and I do definitely think it cuts through a defining feature of the of the um, the building. And I don't know if I'm interpreting <laughs> that correctly either when you say cutting through. Does that mean protruding through or um, are, are um, changing oh. the line of sight? And, and, and the same with the windows too, honestly. I think that um, the windows there, um, they're fixed double hung. They're, I, at least the, the ones on the um, fourth Ave side, except for that large one, um, I don't know if it's original trim or not, but it's definitely old woodwork that's been there for a number of years, uh, probably dating back before when Metzger's was there. Um, and it has been you know, maintained decently, uh, but not greatly. So is it the, the two north windows there are the fixed double hung ones? Mm -hmm. okay. Three, yeah, two. The two that are shown with yeah. lighting. Yeah. yeah. Um, <coughs> I think that the, the same effect could probably be, you know, achieved um, with the, the storefront lighting, possibly as a, you know, a compromise. Uh, if you go back to the Washington view, you have a front corner view. Yeah, using taking in those two and having your lighting on those, and but I, I still the lower one. Um, I think detracts from a a character defining feature of the of the building and having that um, rail on there it's not huge but it's in my opinion it's gonna you're gonna see it you're gonna see it walking down the street during the day mm -hmm. I think it opens us up to um, more of the same down the in other areas um, and, and it's not something that you see downtown um, in the historic districts anywhere. It's, a, so it's like a new lighting element being introduced that you don't see in any other buildings. That's my opinion mm -hmm. on, on that. No, I agree with you, Max. Now, one thing, without rambling too much. <laughs> one thing I think is to consider when it's lit and when it's not lit. And I feel like when it's not lit, it's probably gonna be painted in the same and minimally visible like other kind of service elements that get added like wiring for conduit conduit or something like that that ends up painted then it really even as a pedestrian i feel like that stuff blends in and while it's not ideal it sounds like it's going to be carried out in a way that's pretty minimal to the visual impact so i i don't know if i'm too worried about it in the normal daylight time the effect at night i feel like is definitely something that's intending to draw attention to itself so then is that appropriate and it seems like at least in the front, I'm agreeing that, you know, it is a way to draw attention and it's not going to be detracting really. Running it down the whole side, I can understand what you're saying, that it's kind of the way it shines and, you know, I'd have a little bit of concern about that, but having seen the work that our applicant has done and, you know, getting the details right and making it work is something that I'd probably be swayed by a little bit knowing that we've had good history having stuff turn out really nice so i feel like i'm kind of on the fence whether it should run along the whole building or not i could probably be persuaded i'm not sure though suggestion um let us do just the front and the two pieces um now um we'll come back to you i mean this is the start of a multiple renovation mm -hmm. by by these mm -hmm. folks um and so we could prove it by showing how it looks with the two side strips. You're talking about uh, on, on the front the corner, corner the front, front two corners there. Yep. The front door, yeah, yep, the, the red ones on the front door. Right. And stopping at and stop the, the small parapet that's yep. in the yeah, front that, corner. I, I would be. You can see it. See how it looks. Be yeah. to that. Right. And and even around those front windows, I think is would be an appropriate use. It's just going all the way down Fourth Ave. I think is that. I think that's what's really what's really bothering me about. Yeah, the I think you, that corner is so prominent yeah. anyway. Um, you know, it's, it's a pretty 
the, the side of 4th Ave, I think, I just don't believe it's necessary, and I, and I think it takes away from the building itself, too, even at night. Uh, to have the lights let us, running let us down prove it to you how nice yeah. it looks. <laughs> yeah, the one other concern I'd have is if, kind of, in, like you were saying, setting a precedent, if we then in the next six months get 35 applications, every restaurant says, we want those and, new LED lights. Yeah, there. and then you got, you know, running down Main Street, you got runner lights all the way through. The whole it looks like a handy is, camp wrap. <laughs> Yeah. Well, if you treat this as a test case, you can always say no to the next one if, yeah. if this one gets installed and, and it doesn't seem appropriate. That's, we, we learned that from Main Street once with lighting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then it would be a test for the low light as, as well as the window light instead of approving all of, or <coughs> if we, I guess I we could the... talk about them separately, but mm -hmm. it would be nice to see that effect as well and just see them installed um, and then I mean I, I guess just to speak personally I don't have a problem with those like I said on the uh, aluminum modern windows mm -hmm. but that was before I learned from the the on-site visit that there were three that oh, are yeah. historic so um, it would be nice to see those tested on on the front as well sure, I'm, I amend my motion yeah, I'd like to amend my motion. Um, let's see. I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 203 East Washington. Um, in the Main Street Historic District to install six LED accent lights on the condition that all installation and new penetrations for hookup are done through mortar joints, not masonry units or stone. Um, uh, as a condition, the work is compatible in exterior design arrangement, texture and material in relationship to the surrounding resources uh, uh, and meets the Anniversary Histo Historic District gu Design Guidelines in particular for the guidelines for signs and lighting and the Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation and Guidelines for Rehabilitating Historic Buildings, in particular standards 1, 2, 9, and 10, and the guidelines for storefronts. Support. And Go ahead. Okay. Good. All right, we have our amended motion still supported by Commissioner White. Yeah. Further discussion? I guess yeah. just, I want to, yeah. yeah, I'm, are we talking about the second story, putting those lights on nope. up there? Okay. Nope. No. We're, We're just gone. talking yep. about, pardon me? So six, six ropes would be specific to the front corner, the two windows surrounding the front door, and the two lower. So one, two, three. You want to pull that up for yep. us? So two here yep. on this window, mm -hmm. two, two here there. on this yep. window, one on the ground here, and yep. one on the ground here, okay. only as far yep. as this is shown. Yep. Yep. Yes. Okay. But I, there's that a pier that sticks out there that it yeah. looks like the red light is actually going beyond the pier but yeah. i think it's aren't we talking about butting stop. into that pier yeah, yeah. i yes. think that's just a crumb okay. drawing yeah yep. and you would have had yeah. to, he would have had to do yeah. that anyway you would yep. have had to wrap her around yeah, yeah. okay yeah. Pier. okay i'm clear now yep and i think that's going to draw a lot of attention to that that corner still and i i can agree with that one yeah it'll um, be interesting to see Commissioner Cope, would you mind if I suggested another addition to your motion that Please. says six LED accent lights as discussed at the meeting? Uh, yes. Thank you. Do I need to read the entire motion again? No. Um, yeah. I'd like to. I, I second. Okay. Forever preserved in the cloud. <laughs> that way, if anyone ever questions it, we can just can run play on. the tape. Yeah. Play Correct. the tape. <laughs> Okay. So we're all on, we all understand. Yeah, this makes sense. Yes, we're all on the same page. All right, any cool. further discussion? <laughs> no, I'm good now. Yeah. I should have mentioned it during the sign part. I like the dog. <laughs> I never even knew curtain call was there or what that was, but the dog would make me pay attention to this. What kind of dog is that? A boxer. A boxer, right. One more right. Okay. Haymaker. haymaker. General right. discussion. Haymaker. I had to explain <laughs> to Jill what a haymaker was. Okay, so but you can vote on this one, and then I have one more little thing I want to ask you guys. All right, sounds good. All right, we'll move to vote. All those in favor, please say yes. 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 Those opposed, say no. The amended motion passed. You'll receive written notice. Please remember to pull any required building permits. Okay. 
Next one question. more thing. Go ahead. Oh. You go first. One more thing that I wanted to raise, guys. Um, the owner of the building would like to replace the glass in the front door yes. with clear glass because it's it's leaded now and it's sort of Victorian-y uh, and you can't see through it. And it's been broken lots of times, too. Yeah. Yeah, and so people, you know, coming out, going in, mm. get, get into conflicts. Um, I don't know the age of the door. I don't believe it's a very old door. It's if not. It's, been it's, it's, you know, it's a classy one from 30 years ago. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to make sure that no one has any qualms about that. Yep. Stamp approval. No problem. Especially, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Especially yeah. if it's been broken yeah. before. Okay, good. Bevel, so good. nice, handsome-looking tempered stuff. Yeah, okay. Great. Is that what you were going to say? Yep, bevel okay. and temper. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Thanks right. folks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Our next item we have is new business G1, 514 West Madison Street, a historic marker request. This is a cool house. Yeah. Five fourteen West Madison is between third and fourth streets. It's a brick two story mansard roofed home. It appears in the eighteen ninety four and ninety seven Polk City directories with no named occupant and in eighteen ninety eight as the home of Emily and John Bonian, a laborer. Their last name is later listed as Bonin and eventually B O N I N with one N in the middle. Uh, it features a full-width front porch with a shallow mansard roof that is adorned with arrow and round wood shingles arranged to form two rows of full shingles. The base of the porch is rusticated block and the decking and stairs are poured concrete. The one-over-one -one double-hung windows are topped with shallow brick arches. The front and side elevations of the mansard roof feature small dormer windows with stylized pediments. On May 11th of 2012, a fire caused extensive, extensive burn damage to the second floor and attic and smoke and water damage throughout the house. The former owner worked with staff for four years to accurately and sensitively repair exterior damage to the house, as well as restore a number of original finishes and features that had been modified or obscured over the years. 2015, the HDC approved an application to install a third floor rear facing dormer for egress and to shorten a kitchen window. It is in the National Register Old West Side Historic District. So when reviewing these applications, um, the building must be 50 years old and documented and you'll see that this house is extremely well documented, <laughs> which I give the new owners a lot of credit for. Um, building must have been maintained over time in its original condition or undergone historically appropriate restoration or rehabilitation. There weren't a lot of changes made to it. Um, there was a uh, little dormer approved by the HDC uh, a couple of years ago on the back because it was required for egress. You couldn't get somebody out of those little attic windows. So there's a slightly larger version of that on the back side. And um, a few non-original features, uh, some porch roofs that were made of plastic and stuff like that were removed after the fire. And um, uh, until just recently, uh, one of these porch posts was missing uh, and it's been driving me crazy for four years. And finally, when it changed hands, the new owners put the last porch post up. <laughs> <laughs> That was the last piece of work that I was waiting to be completed on this house. It has, um, it does not have inappropriate features, enclosures, or repairs that have been done to it. And the principal facades visible from the street maintain their integrity of form, materials, and architectural features. Uh, the house is 119 years old. It has maintained its historic integrity. Uh, the lack of alteration to the house is critical to understanding the architectural significance of the home. Its mansard style is rare on the Old West Side, and it's a lovely record of a moment in Ann Arbor's history. The current owners, Zachary Moan and Shannon Fitzsimmons, have supplied extensive and much appreciated deed research that is attached. Staff feels that a historic plaque is appropriate for the John and Emily Banyan House, located at 514 West Madison, um, based on the age of the house, history, unaltered or restored appearance of its character-defining features, and staff does recommend adding circa to the date, since records don't reveal exactly when they moved in, though it was certainly not later than 1898. It's, it's unclear in the, um, in the Polk City directories. They, they would say vacant when a house was either new and unoccupied, but I think they also used it for under construction and not occupied. So I don't know if this was just a three-year project 
or if they built it and then the family didn't move in for a while or what was going on. But um, so um, the sample motion mentions the circa 1898 John and Emily Bunyan house at 514 West Madison. Mm -hmm. If ever there was a worthy, a plaque worthy house, <laughs> I think this is it. That discoloration around the windows um, has been there. I don't know why. Um, I don't think that that's all new brick in there. It was that way before the fire. So it, I'm not sure if they're... It sort of looks like it was clean. Yeah, like the brick doesn't look different. Clean. Right. But it just looks like it was cleaned right. around the windows. And then there's... Yeah. It's very... Like it looks... It, you question it though. What yeah, what's going yeah. on with that? You know? I thought maybe there were shutters there, but there wouldn't have been shutters around the top. Right. So maybe that point, that part had to be repointed, and they mm. cleaned it while they did it. Yeah, I think the I whatever know. mason went in there, possibly used some sort of acid to clean it and wash it when Tuck pointed, which isn't mm -hmm. brick. Anyway, that was done quite a while ago. Yeah. So let's. It'll hope take a hundred years to get there. it to look like it did. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Jill, I had a question about the, uh, there's that uh, bay um, on the east side. Mm -hmm. That window, is that an original window on the east side of that east bay? On the, this it, one? It, yes. You can't tell from this perspective, but right. you know, that window is really big for like a, you know, old west side sort of historic yeah. window. It, I was guessing it was original, but it's just... I it's don't, notable. It's, I, I don't it's know. large. <laughs> right. After the fire, all of the windows were replaced, but they were replaced in the same configuration yeah. that they were in. Right. Okay. So I don't know if somebody came in and picture window that, if it used to be a couple of million windows. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Just wondering. Yeah. 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 They did a great job, like, restoring some of the panels down here. Um, there were stories about how the previous owners who owned it for decades made their children cut out the fish scale shingles. Mm -hmm. They would give them flat ones and make them cut them into circles <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to, whenever they needed them for the porch on the mansard roof. That's cool. <laughs> so do we need a motion? Or we yep. We do need a motion. I'll, for, uh, I'll put the motion out there on this one. Mm -hmm. I move that the circa 1898 John and Emily uh, Banyan House at 514 West Madison Street meets the criteria for a City of Ann Arbor historic building marker based on its age, historic, and arch architectural significance and contribution to the history of Ann Arbor. Support. Seconded by Commissioner White. Discussion on the motion. Beautiful home. Yeah, nice having all the research attached. I've yes. always looked at that house ever since I was a kid. <laughs> always going to the dairy. And interesting. I'm always has stuck out. Thinking they beat inflation with the value of the house in 1971, it was fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> it wasn't a small amount of money, but not bad. It's definitely worth a lot more than that. All right, move to vote. All those in favor, please say yes. 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 Those opposed, say no. Motion carries. We will award the historic plaque at 514 West Madison. And if our applicants are watching, there's information on how to get your plaque, or you can ask Jill for the details. And actually, we don't have minutes, do we? No, no minutes. All right, so we'll move on through H. Instead of our agenda here, we do not have our April minutes, so I'll have those next time probably. The next one up is reports from commissioners. Any reports? Yes, I, uh, I went to the Michigan Historic Preservation Network um, 37th Annual Statewide Preservation Conference. It was in uh, Pat Petoskey and uh, uh, it was outstanding. Uh, we had about 24 sessions and uh, covered everything from uh, how to replace windows and uh, keep the original frames. It was outstanding. So I re recommend it in the future, if you have opportunities, uh, go to the conferences. 
next year's conference will be in East Lansing. Great. Were there any tours? Yeah, there were some tours mm -hmm. in, uh, of the Petoskey and the historic area. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, I didn't take the tours, but they mm -hmm. were good. I just went to the sessions. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Any other reports? All right, moving on to assignments. We have our Monday, July 10th meeting, or no, our Monday, July 10th review committee at 5 p.m. for the July 13th regular meeting. I know at the July meeting, Max and John will both be absent. Yeah, I expect Anyone? I'll be around and available to do review committee too. You will be? Yep. Okay, we got one. <clears throat> I would have to check the schedule with my scheduler. <laughs> <laughs> Let you know. Um, so Ben and Let you know tomorrow. I mean I or I could do it, but okay. I might have a a project being proposed. Oh, yeah. And so maybe that would be annoying. Yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't you don't want to do a that. Substitute for that one. Yeah. 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 yeah, if you think your project will be in for July, don't yeah. volunteer for okay. a new committee. Um Bob, why don't you check your schedule? Yes. And I will try to remember to email Ellen. Uh, Ellen, Ellen, who, not John, because he won't be here. Okay. Ellen, who may be replaced or by Evan. then, or Evan. Mm -hmm. Okay. We didn't forget Bob. about you, Evan. We missed you. I even brought him cookies. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, next up we have reports from staff. We have our staff activities report. If you have any questions, let me know. That was a small one. Joe, what's the, if we're looking at this now, this, this yeah. Mm -hmm. what was, what's the single floor addition on rear of house? HDC 1763? 1763. So our hearings also do show up here. That's yeah. it. So that's the one next to the church yeah. on Third Street. Okay. So yeah. that's just a It's a single floor addition on top of a first floor addition. Yeah. So right. yeah. It's just staff approval. Right? No, no, no. These oh, are no. these are commission and staff approvals. Oh god. Yeah, okay. yeah. All all right. Some of them we did. Yeah. 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 They all get put in there together. Yeah. Okay. And Thank on that you. one, that particular one, um, David Maris did submit sketches of his a little bit of trim detail, and I sent it out, and Ben and John uh, took a look at it. And uh, the as conditioned change? stuff. Right. Okay. He gave us a little more input and yeah, detail. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you're not alarmed by anything else you see, no. No. All right. we're good. Next, we'll go on to our item L, concerns from commissioners. Any concerns to bring forward? Seeing none, we'll move to communications. M, any communications that we haven't already gone over? No. Oh, I'm hoping that Commissioner Ramsberg will still be on the commission next month, or if she's not, if she's been replaced by city council, that she'll come back so that we can honor her with a plaque. Mm -hmm. Oh, I saw that the uh, there was the study committee. Is that what it's called for the English House? Has been yeah. created and yeah, the study of committee was appointed on Monday night by City Patrick, Council. There's some um, historic district there's three folks members. on it, right? Yeah, yep, some yep. There's Patrick McCauley yeah. um, who who wrote the book, yeah. and uh, Greg DeVries, who is an architect uh, who studies historic landscapes at Quinn Evans, and Bridget Bly, who is a nearby neighbor. Um, to the house hmm. Seems like and a good um, yep we'll start meeting very shortly and try to move swiftly yeah. mm -hmm. and I neglected to report back on awards on Monday night um, right. a couple of you were at the awards uh, party and it went great at City Council it was a very very good turnout there are a lot of people in council chambers who got up and left afterwards that's how you can tell how many people mm -hmm. come they all get up and leave together after the awards are given out and uh, it, it went extremely well, and we are indebted to the committee that does all the work and to Norman Eileen for hosting the party afterwards. It's an amazing party space. 
Where did, where Thanks, Norman Eileen. Yeah. Norman Eileen's house okay. um, uh, division. Awesome. Uh, yeah. The Judge Wilson house. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. All right. If there's no other business, if there's no objection, we will adjourn our June 8th, 2017 regular meeting.